Hi, how are you? How are you uh, doing? How are you holding up? Good, good, good. Thanks. Yeah, um, certainly nothing to complain about. Very well. You know, you're a smart celebrity that you didn't open up with a complaint. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> um, you know, I mean, listen, I, I, everybody's everybody's got something going through something, right? But, sure. but by uh, by comparison with with many, um, um, we're, we're, we're doing pretty well. I have to tell you something funny. So I woke up this morning, opened up Twitter. You know, it's like my usual thing. Get the phone out, look at Instagram, look at Twitter. And a friend of mine, Louis Peitzman, who's a journalist, this is just random, obviously having no idea that we're going to talk, tweeted, um, Hugh Dancy seems nice. Is he nice? This was a tweet. You had no idea, obviously. This was, And Hugh Dancy, I'm here to tell you that every response in this thread, Anthony Smith said, famously nice. Huh. Someone named Nick said, yes, very nice. Uh, Jay said, one time I saw him three days in a row in three different places, and the third time he high-fived me. This is all true. Uh, Why I, are think, you... I think when it's, if, it's, if they're all saying that, there's something suspicious about it. <laughs> Uh, no, there's even, a picture of you. I find that questionable. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Are you often high fiving just strangers uh, on the streets I have of New York? No idea. I mean, maybe I was day drinking. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh my god! It just made me laugh because I'm like, that is, you know, it, it feels nice to be nice. Like when you're a famous person and people obviously recognize you. Is do you find it like a struggle to always be nice, or is it just naturally that's who you are? No, I mean. I think, you know, it's a funny thing. Uh, uh, I don't know if you know who Darren Brown is. Um, of course. British, He's been a guest right? on our show. I'm very friendly with Darren. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and really, really smart, interesting guy. And I remember him saying, you know, if people know who you are and they they interact with you and they, they you know, they're, they're going to remember that interaction. And if they happen to interact with you on a bad day, you know, mm. you're just having a bad day or whatever it might be. And you don't hold the door for them or you don't stop and <laughs> high five them or whatever it might be. <laughs> Their takeaway from that is, well, that guy's, I'm trying to think of the, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. That guy's, that guy's terrible. That guy's, he's just he's grumpy. He's an asshole. So, you, you, you won't know, even say it, the know, word he's asshole. An, okay, wow. he's an asshole. Exactly. Yeah, thank you. And the, um, and the, you know, the flip side of that is if they meet you, meet you on a good day, they obviously think you're, you're really, um, you know, you're really nice. So I, I love that. I like this journey for you, though. And I, I, you know, it helps also that you're a handsome Englishman who I feel like in America, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Do you find that you get away with a lot because of your looks and accent? Um, it sounds like this is a kind of like really roundabout way to get me to confess something. But yeah, I, that is what this I is. Think, no, listen, I do think that you benefit or uh, not you. I benefit from a, a <laughs> kind of upfront preconception um definitely when i came when i first came out to the states you know for work for acting i felt like and this is slightly different but people all assumed that i had you know acted in all the classics and i'd studied shakespeare and i'd been been on stage for you know years and years and i was very happy to let them continue to think that yeah, none of it was was true at all why is it that so many English people are also trained in Shakespearean drama? I know he's one of your most um, famous celebs, but it just feels like <laughs> everyone yeah. I meet went to RADA and they can all recite Hamlet. It's not a thing that happens here. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, there's a different, right, there's a different channel that, that, that people go to, although I think that's changing. Like I say, I didn't do that. I mean, I went, I went to college, but I didn't mm -hmm. go to college to study um, acting. Oh. Came out. I, I tried to, you know, was just figuring out how, where to go. Was you know, working and managed to get an agent and so on and so forth. There so, you like what did that, you study that, in school? What's that? I studied uh, English like, literature. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I, look, I was doing it already, but I just, I mean, that like ten years before that, I think there was a much more um, uh, kind of the, the channel that you had to go through was much more prescribed. Like you really did have to go through drama school um, and you did have to you know, know your Shakespeare and all the rest of it. And that's probably not so true anymore. Now you can succeed by just being on TikTok. Right? True in, in, in England as it is anywhere else. Isn't TikTok, isn't TikTok mm -hmm. one of the darkest things of modern technology? So, and how old, may yeah. I ask how old your children are? Yeah, they're seven and one and a half. Okay, so they're not quite TikToking yet, but does the seven-year-old want to look at it, or is that still too young? You know, it's a really good question. I like my my instinctive response is that oh well, he doesn't know what TikTok is, but actually, I bet if I asked him, there's a good chance he would know exactly what it was. Can I you put him on the line? I'm curious to know. <laughs> you know, he's <laughs> deeply into his remote schooling right now, so I'm. Oh. Ask. <laughs> How are you holding up with having being around the kids so much? Well. 
I mean, I don't want to describe this as a plus, but but it is true that like in you know our line of work, obviously neither of us is working, right? We're mm-hmm. both actors, and that's just that's not happening right now. So we're here, and that means I'm not trying to do what some of my friends are trying to do, and a lot of people around the country and the world are trying to do, which is to you know work from home while simultaneously manage their kids. That that would be a whole other challenge. Um, and and so I'm able to look. Sometimes I want to tear my hair out, or actually, more specifically, I want to tear his hair out. Yeah. But I but I'm also really enjoying suddenly being able to sit, not literally, but kind of looking over his shoulder, you know, while he's in it, while he's in his school environment. And oh, seeing, that's sweet. And I, this sounds like a kind of, I know this sounds like, a, like you said, a kind of smart celeb thing to say, but I swear it's true, just sitting in awe of his teachers and what they've pulled together. Oh, for sure. You know, that, that since they started, it's just so incredibly impressive. Um, so, yeah, I can't I, imagine. I mean, by and large, yeah. it's been a positive thing. It's very exciting. Does your son go to a school with a lot of celebrity parents? Because how exciting to see them on the Zooms. I would love that. I would be <laughs> like, I want to <laughs> yeah. hack into his class. Yes. Yeah. That's quite funny. With like celeb parents so, so desperate to be back on screen that they're hijacking <laughs> their kids' Zoom classes. They're like, hey, I have to do a self tape. Like Can I just I like run some thing. lines? I like to- yeah, I'd, I'd like to thank my uh, my son's teacher and um, and God. <laughs> yeah. Oh my no, God! Uh, no, it's not been like that. It's just it's the kids, you know. It's the kids and and the teachers mm-hmm. managing them. And, and I mean, I'm talking about seven year olds. Like I say, having really basically kind of civilized conversations. Like they've figured this stuff out. I think way quicker than than a lot of us. Um, I do want to ask you another question. So uh, obviously, everyone adores you and your wife Claire Danes. Um, we were saying before you got on the call that every girl who's working on this show wanted to be be your wife when we were teenagers like we all just were we're such fans and she went on Dax uh, Shepard's podcast recently this is I guess came out in April and talked about how it took a one night stand uh, for her to realize that she wanted to marry you but I think the twist here is that it wasn't a one night stand with you so um, I'm sure you know the story uh, do you have a response maybe on my show to your wife who I'm sure is in the next room about <laughs> about having to sleep with someone else to realize that actually you, lovely Hugh Dancy, is who she wanted to spend the rest of her life with? Well, first thing I should mention is that I have, I'm, this is complete news to me, so I'm glad that I is get it? to respond to this. In, in real time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my um, God. Secondly, I'm, no, no, that's fine. I mean, I'm aware, of, no, 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 don't, I mean, it's not news to me, the story. Uh, mm-hmm. That's not news to me. Uh, I can only say that I'm, I'm really glad that my wife chose to have a one night stand with an inadequate lover. (laughs) That's true. Yeah. You're the bar was set so low for you. Who knows? (laughs) And did she, let me ask you this. How soon into your relationship did she even tell you that story? Cause I think a lot of women, it's really honest of her. A lot of women would not have fessed up to it, especially publicly, but was it something that she like laughed at eventually or we were not in a relationship when that happened in fact that's he says this is when i kind of edge into kind of dangerous territory perhaps right, but, right. um it was well it was kind of in the moment i guess when we were she was single i was single and we were both clearly thinking about it you know mm-hmm. but um she was also thinking i suppose like as one often does like well do i want to jump back into another relationship sure and i think she just come out of one and like i said so at her um, and now she's so lucky and she gets to stay with you during quarantine like she really picked the right guy I mean it. <laughs> Father of her children. Yeah. You know, you guys did it. See, that's the love we, we I'm looking did, for. We did do that. Yeah, we did. I mean, yeah. we did all the, you know, it's funny to be, and and kind of, I guess, good. I mean, for us anyway, that we've made all those decisions and kind of those commitments and produced those kids like before all this shit came down. I know. Um, you're, you're, you know, that's a blessing. It's funny because for me, and I don't have children, I see it from the other way where I'm like, thank God there are no children here because I think, like, if I call friends who have kids, it sounds like the Jumanji board game. Like, it's chaos. I'm like, are you okay? Like, do you need someone to come help you? I mean, it's just, I think a lot of families yeah, are which going course, through you, a lot. You, which, of course, they'd love someone to come help them. That's, that's, that's I know. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's not, it's not really chaos, but it's more like occasionally Claire and I look around like, wow, I feel like we haven't actually, we haven't spoken as two grown-ups for about, you know, a week and a half. Oh, my it's God. Just been like, you know, pull your chair in, sweetheart. Come on, you know, uh, whatever it might be. Um, That's funny. You know, I've, I've been reading a lot of Harry Potter. Um, how uh, loud, not to her, you know. 
I feel like we need to yeah. have a follow up interview, you and I, in like three months to check in on you, just mentally. See how you're doing. Yeah, I mean, please check in on me in three yes. months. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Um, okay, let's talk about this show. Uh, you know, we do reads for this show, The Good Fight, on on the show, where we constantly are talking about Memo 618, and it's almost become an inside joke for the listeners. Like, what is Memo 618? It just makes us laugh. Uh, so, Hugh yeah. Dancy, star of The Good Fight, uh, first question is, what is Memo 618? Hit it. <laughs> Go for it. I I had no idea when I signed up, and I still have no idea. <laughs> That can't be true. You don't know what it is? <clears throat> no, I mean, I have. I, I, look, I'm, I'm a few episodes ahead of you. <laughs> right. So I have a sense of what its powers are, I suppose. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I mean, because you guys know, right, that like everybody else, um, shooting was, was closed, was shut down for, for a while. I mean, sure. it, it, you know, temporarily, let's say. So, um, that there are still questions that are yet to be resolved for me as well, because it's not like I'm in the writer's room. Ah, that must be so frustrating. Like, I don't even work on the show, and I want to know what it is. You know what I mean? So I can imagine for you, it's, it's got to yeah, be Yeah, I mean, kind of. Yeah. It, it's like, the, but, but at the same time, you, get, you experience it the way you would if you're watching it, except just a few mm. months ahead. So you actually play an American attorney, am I right, on this show? Correct. Uh, and... Yeah. Your accent on it is so uh, believable. You're really oh, good. good at it. Do you think it's because you live in New York, like you're just so used to hearing the American accent? Because, you know, sometimes, do you think you're getting, speaking more with an American accent, like how Madonna turned British when she moved to yes. England? Or is it, is it coursing through your veins now, Hugh Dancy? Um, well, I mean, I have now, like, well, my youngest obviously doesn't really speak. Mm-hmm. Well, it kind of does, but it doesn't sound like anything any <laughs> accent that I would recognize. But, you know, my kid speaks in an American accent, obviously. So, yeah, maybe. I don't think I do. I only notice it when I go back to England. If I go to London, I get in a cab or whatever. After a day or two, I feel my accent kind of crispening up, mm-hmm. uh, for want of a better mm-hmm. way of putting it. I get that. Um, but, like, 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 kind of over here, my accent, it feels like it's just getting a bit flabbier. But I, I don't think I've gone to How dare you like think- say that to me <laughs> when I am locked in my apartment? <laughs> you say that your accent, American accent, is getting flabbier. That is, I, I feel I red. I'm going f- to blame it on quarantine, but why not? I think we can blame anything on the coronavirus. And I blame. Oh, you have no way. I blame everything. I really do. Yeah. Let me. Uh, when, as an actor, do you find like emotionally when you're in a part, let's say, is this because uh, your character is sort of like riding the line between good and bad, right? People still don't know if you're a good guy or a mm-hmm. bad guy. Um, do you like where do you reach to kind of become that person? Because everyone's saying you're such a nice guy. Where how do you become a bad guy when you're you? You know what I mean? Where do you go back to? Um, I mean, first of all, like I'm not that nice just to be. Just I got it. Kind of. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I think that, but, but that said, like, you don't, I mean, you don't start, this is such a cliche for an actor, but it's true. Like, you, you know, unless, unless, <clears throat> I mean, unless you're specifically being asked to do this, mostly you're not thinking like, how nice is this person or how, how kind of evil is this person? You're kind of trying to think like, where are they coming from? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and this guy, Caleb, uh, he's, I mean, apart from anything else, he doesn't really have much of a backstory. I think you learn more about his backstory in the episode that's that's about to that's going to drop tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, he's he's ex-military, for example. Oh. So my kind of thinking about him was a little bit like you know you've got all this fighting, infighting, and politics in the law firm. Um, it's all very high stakes, but it's probably not so high stakes if you've been you know in Afghanistan for several years. Like right. you, you you wouldn't find that to be life and death when you've literally been in a life and death experience. So I felt like he was just not so bothered about um, um, kind of saying to people, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm actually, I'm kind of spying on you, you know, because right. it's slightly amusing to him. And, like and maybe office something... politics. Yeah. Go on. Sorry. Yeah. Like it just, it's not the be all and end all, you know? Right. Um, and, and now we don't even have of... office politics. Now we're just, we have politics <laughs> with our garbage now cans. We tragically just have politics. <laughs> very funny we can make a whole campaign on that one slogan you dancy i swear to you yes you're right bring back let's put the office back into politics yes oh my god please do something with that you have the means in a way 